Hey everyone, Ben Chan here, VP of Engineering at Chainlink Labs. Today, I'm going to talk about the future of interoperability between blockchains. At Chainlink Labs, we like to build infrastructure for smart contracts. So the way to think of cross-chain applications is not simply about token bridge applications allowing for assets to be transferred, but uh, infrastructure stack, enabling an ecosystem of programmatic bridges. Now, these layers can then you know, enable developers to send assets with transaction instructions across chains, such as selling and staking, or to deploy dApps that span multiple chains as shards. At the bottommost layer of the stack is the transport layer, powered by off-chain reporting 2.0. At the second layer of the stack, we have the cross-chain interoperability protocol which provides developers with the ability to send messages and instructions to other contracts across blockchains. And at the third layer of the stack, we have the application layer. And this is where services like programmatic token bridges can be built. In this presentation, I'm going to share a little bit more about each of the layers of the stack and our roadmap to building programmatic bridge infrastructure. Here at the transport layer, our requirement is to observe and provide a reliable, high integrity, efficient transport of messages. So the story starts in the beginning, where essentially oracles agree on and uh, send data on chain. In the naive oracle request response approach, um, multiple oracles and nodes observe and create uh, individual on-chain transactions. And this could cost a fair amount of gas fees if we found on certain chains. And it's a challenge when scaling up the number of distributed oracle nodes. So uh, Chainlink has been moving data and, and transactions on chain for some time. So we've, we've actually developed off-chain reporting to scale this. The protocol of off-chain reporting uses a peer-to-peer -peer network with a lightweight consensus algorithm to aggregate Oracle responses securely while preserving accountability. Um, today, OCR 1.0 feeds uh, currently secure about 30 billion in DeFi app TVL. And with OCR 2.0, we're going to generalize this capability, allowing for generic computation and enabling uh, cross-chain messaging. Thanks to the scaling properties of OCR 2.0, we're going to be able to add hundreds of high quality Oracle nodes from reputable node operators. And we'll leverage this network to securely validate cross-chain transactions in a temp temper-proof way while minimizing gas costs. How does OCR work? First, uh, a leader is selected at random to facilitate communication. If the leader does not respond or it goes down, then a new leader is selected. The consensus algorithm then operates over sequentially increasing rounds, starting with the query stage where the leader requests observations from every node. In response, nodes make observations, sign, and send them back to the leader. Now, observations could be price data, but in the case of cross-chain, there will be uh, token movements and messaging events made from one chain with a request to deliver them to a destination chain. So then after that, the leader collects these observations and broadcasts both the query and the signed observations to all nodes. And all participants then need to decide if the report should be generated on chain. Now, this could depend on several factors. In the case of price data, you only want to broadcast reports that deviate from the on-chain price above a certain threshold. In the case of cross-chain, the network should only send transactions that have reached quorum or have sufficient block confirmations and, and paid sufficient amount of gas for the transmission on the destination network. At the next stage, each participant will then need to sign the report and send it to the leader. And the leader collects the signed reports and shares the final report for transmission. Finally, in the transmission phase, nodes take turns to transmit the final report on chain. Uh, first, uh, this starts with one node uh, transmitting that report transaction. Now, if this designated node gets uh, their trans transaction on chain, then, then that's great. They, they get the reward. Um, if somehow tries to withhold the report or, or fails to get the tran transmission confirmed for whatever reason, um, then um, after a certain amount of blocks or a certain amount of time, um, the next node in line will transmit. And if that fails, then after yet another set number of blocks, then the next node will transmit and so on. So in this protocol, an increasing number of nodes will transmit until the report is confirmed. And uh, you can see here that, that what this does is to ensure that there's no single point of failure, um, but yet we only need one report with sufficient signatures to be submitted. 
And thus, we can scale the delivery of reports on-chain uh, very reliably and very, very efficiently. I think it's a pragmatic implementation and it works, but uh, we're not going to stop here. Because what's interesting, I think, is, is that since the uh, report contains the signature of every Oracle node that has responded, this allows us to attribute accountability and reputation for Oracle nodes. And then we can use this attribution together with fraud proofs and optimistic approaches to achieve trust minimization and ensure integrity at the transport layer. Now we'll move on to the second layer of the stack here, the cross-chain interoperability protocol. This is an open standard where anyone can build cross-chain messaging between smart contracts across multiple chains. So in this interface, uh, developers call the send to remote chain method um, from that app. Uh, initially, this will be on chaining supported chains, but the idea is that it will expand to any blockchains uh, that implement uh, the uh, CCIP. The method takes in the destination chain ID, uh, the smart contract address on the remote chain, which will receive the message, uh, the payload, and the options. Then the sending smart contract can just sit back and, and wait while the message is delivered. And on the receiving chain, the smart contract, the receiver address will be called via the receive from remote chain method. And given the sender's bridge ID, address, and uh, message. Uh, so let's break down how, how this works. First, uh, messaging router smart contracts will need to be deployed on uh, every chain to be able to accept and send messages using the CCIP interface. Behind the messaging router will be a registry with several bridge lane implementations conforming to the CCIP standard. Now, each lane is backed by a DON with outgoing messages going through what we call off-ramps and incoming messages using on-ramps. Uh, so when an application layer smart contract calls the messaging router um, with a message request, the router will choose the optimal off-ramp lane implementation based on the destination chain and the options. In the implementation of that off-ramp lane, uh, you know, a, a cross-chain message requested event log could be emitted on chain. And then as part of the job specifications configured via the OCR 2.0 protocol, Chainlink oracles will then observe the emitted locks on the source chain. The message request can then be placed in a queue uh, within the Oracle network where, where Oracle nodes check if the gas price paid is sufficient to transmit on the destination chain. So if not, then the request uh, is put back in a queue with a timer to be retried later. But otherwise, if there's sufficient payment and the conditions uh, uh, pass uh, and agreed by all the members of the DON, then the DON can agree on a report containing the message and its options. And then uh, as per the uh, OCR protocol, they will take turns to transmit the report uh, signed by multiple observers to the destination chain. On the destination chain, when the transaction is uh, confirmed and it delivered, it will be delivered to the on-ramp uh, implementation smart contract, which will validate the security conditions, handle the payment, and then uh, call the, the messaging router, um, which then can call the receive from remote chain method, letting the receiver know the sending bridge ID and address as well as the message payload. And this way, the destination smart contract can then take any series of actions based on the message, which is, which is really powerful. So with CCIP now, uh, that developers, uh, they can use a single universal message interface to communicate across multiple blockchains for the first time. And at this abstraction layer, developers won't need to concern themselves with the different bridge lane implementations, complexity of the transport layer, validators, node operators, and, and the underlying protocols. Uh, further, they can actually take advantage of the expanding transport layer upgrades and interoperable bridge lanes. Uh, any compliant future bridge lane implementation on any uh, other blockchain could deliver messages to the router, uh, which would then deliver it to the DAP contracts. I'm really excited to see uh, what uh, can be built on top of the CCIP. I think at this layer, applications effectively can span multiple chains. For instance, a money market protocol could allow for collateral to be shared across chains, um, meaning say you have, you know, 
ETH on Ethereum, um, that collateral could be used on another chain or a game that may want to release NFTs could do it on the Ethereum mainnet, but offload computation and expensive uh, user interactions to another chain. So what they would do is they would have the NFT on the mainnet, but you could play the game um, and they would do things like allow for item drops with, that could use VRF um, with the cheap gas on another chain, um, allow for battles to happen there. And then um, when the user clicks save, then they can choose to use the messaging layer to send the save points uh, of the character and the various NFT properties for updates on the Ethereum mainnet. So effectively what we, we can see here is that the messaging layer allows for smart contracts to share and um, kind of shard resources uh, over you know, several chains. So one of the many first services that will be written uh, on top of the CCIP layer is a reference implementation of the programmable token bridge. So this programmable token bridge is a developer facing service built on top of CCIP. And anyone can actually build their own token bridge at this layer. Um, Chainlink's refer reference implementation will support the locking and unlocking and minting and burning of, of ERC20 tokens. So first, uh, if you actually look at the, this, this method over here, um, what's new uh, is that uh, you can see that multiple tokens can be transferred in a single transaction. And additionally, uh, what's also really interesting is that to these uh, tokens can be sent uh, with a message to the destination smart contract. And so uh, this allows the destination smart contract to not only receive tokens, but instructions and orchestration data for follow-up actions of, of uh, what to do with those tokens. So I believe that, that you know, that's going to be dApps that will want to send both tokens and take actions within the same transaction. And so this emerging class of dApps uh, can be built such that users will no longer have to use like a token bridge separate from the application or wallet. It should just be integrated and happen in the, in the background um, so, so that it will require far few transactions and signatures from the user because multiple transactions can now be chained into one orchestration. So uh, in this example, for instance, uh, we have an application that's uh, built on top of the programmatic token bridge. Um, and the destination smart contract here is receiving uh, you know, USDC from a source chain. Um, and because it has instructions, it can immediately, in the same transaction and application, convert that USDC to Matic. It could then place the Matic in a money market that like Aave, where you can start receiving interest. And uh, as you can see, uh, many uh, applications and dApps could combo these orchestrations together uh, and create you know, cross-chain DeFi strategies, uh, which uh, I think um, are, are really awesome. And well, use cases and possibilities like this, they, they, only, they will only exist um, if there are application developers building on top of this platform. Uh, and that is exactly what we want to support. Uh, having said that, uh, although Chainlink enables developers to build fast, uh, what's important for the ecosystem is that we can all go far. And so, you know, looking far out to be impactful, the program prog programmable token bridge service uh, has to be built to secure a massive number of tokens, right? So we're going to do this by first leveraging all the lower layers of the cross-chain stack, including OCR 2.0 and the CCIP. We are going to uh, continue to work with the highest quality infrastructure providers and DevOps teams. And together, we're going to run chaining dons with the largest quorums to date so that we can increase decentralization and remove single points of failure. Also, today, we're announcing the anti-fraud network. So this anti-fraud network uh, is going to be made up of nodes that run independently of the messaging and OCR transport layers, detecting fraud by watching all actions performed by the bridge from separate vantage points and hardware. If no bad behavior is detected, then heartbeat approval transactions uh, will be sent to the involved smart contracts. But if the anti-fraud systems fail to send the safety heartbeat, then the smart contracts will be built to pause operations and limit the risk. The verification system will also trigger in an immediate pause if it detects any uh, bad behavior. So what, what are some of these examples of uh, bad behavior? It could be you know, bridge transactions with incorrect recipient destinations, amounts, messages uh, that are incorrect, um, insufficiently deep confirmations, um, or transactions that appear to be attacking the infrastructure. But they can also detect, the fraud verification network can also uh, detect conditions uh, which may not be visible on chain. For example, 
abnormalities uh, like a really long chain fox or a challenge at the consensus layer, for example, double signing validators or a problem with an L2 sequencer, for example. Um, so we're designing this infrastructure, as you can see, to, to be highly secure. Furthermore, um, if you're building an application handling large amounts, you could participate in the anti-fraud network and provide users with even greater guarantees that any fraudulent activity is going to be caught and mitigated. Well, I hope I've managed to share with you a little bit more today about Chaining Lab's approach to cross-chain infrastructure, um, a protocol with reference implementations that anyone can contribute and, and build on. So I, I think it's really going to be exciting to see what creative developers uh, will compose at multiple layers of the stack um, that you know, we haven't seen yet. Um, you know, being able to harness the network effects of, of multiple blockchains and Ethereum, plus the increased capacity uh, over other many, many other chains to come. And uh, thank you very much. Please visit our website to learn more and sign up today for early access.